podcast. Let's talk about the most important principle. We all here, we're all here, we come to Israel, we come to learn, come to learn about life and Judaism and ourselves. <clears throat> How many of you guys got here uh, on LL? Yeah. One person? Two people, three people, four people, five people, six people. Okay. I want to tell you today why I love El Al. That's it. I came to tell you what I love El Al. No, it sounds funny because like, a lot of people are like, what? You know, well, the, you're right about that. There are plenty of reasons why I don't love El Al. Okay, let me tell you why I don't love I don't love El Al. Okay? It's not that I love El Al because of all, all, all the Jewish people and all their idiosyncrasies, you know, idiosyncrasies that come out while they fly. You know what I mean? That's, that doesn't do it for me. You know, that's not why I love El Al. There's, there's, there's another Jewish factor here and feature that, I don't know, it just, it, it has me thinking, and I want to share it with you. Before I get to El Al, I want to ask you just by a show of hands, um, how, many, how many dog owners are in the room? Raise your hand if you're a dog owner. Do cat owners? No, no, dogs only, <laughs> dogs only. Three, three, is that three hands? Okay, <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, so I got some news. I, I, I don't want to offend anyone. Trust me, I really don't. I really don't. But I want to just talk a little bit about uh, dog owners. I'm going to get back to El Al. I mean, I have this feeling. That don't get offended and stomp out of here, all right? Okay? <laughs> I have this feeling that there's a dark place. Listen carefully to my words. There's a dark place in the next world. For some, some types of dog owners. That's right, I know, it's not politically correct there, you know. You can ruffle little feathers there, you know. Really controversial, okay? <laughs> you see, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. I used to live in Los Angeles. Now, in Los Angeles, where I lived, I mean, you know, there are not that many, they're not that many uh, you know, they're way more dog owners than kid owners. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like walking the streets. I had three kids at the time. I'd be walking down the block with my little kids. And I was like the, I was like the, you know, the, strength, the sight to see. I mean, everyone's walking their dog, you know? I'm walking my kids. They're walk, walking their dogs, you know? And the dog owners would be like, hey, look, Fido, there's a kid. You know, like, oh, you know? That would, that's, that, that, you know, that's what it was like, all right? So the following thing just happened numerous times, like a whole bunch of times, and, and it really got me thinking. Of course, my kids, you know, like many kids are, you know, they're scared of the dog, you know, and of course their father is uh, <laughs> terrified of the dog, but okay, we're not going to talk about that. I'm like, it's my job to be the man, you know. So we get walking down the street, and my kids are like, ah! I'm scared of the dog, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, s -s 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 stand, stand behind me, you know, here, here, here. Right, and that's what, that was my job, right? That's my job, I'm the, I'm the macho dad. And he'd be walking, and, there, and, and, and there's a dog, and the dog owner approaching us, you know? And as we get closer, my kids would obviously get a little bit more intimidated. And inevitably, at some point, I'm like, uh, excuse me, you know, sir, you know, my children are they're afraid of the dog, you know? And the dog owner would say, okay, not, not, not always, not always, not at all, but too, too many times, right? He'd say, anyone want to guess what he'd say? My dog is afraid of your kids. <laughs> no, that never happened to me. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. He doesn't bite. You know, don't worry. He, 
he just, he loves kids, you know, he, he's friendly. And we get a little closer. And the kids end, you know, <clears throat> someone else gets like, oh my gosh, I really don't like that thing, you know. And my kids are getting more freaked out, like, ah, d dad, you know, in Hebrew, Abba, Abba means daddy, right? Abba, what, the dog, we're scared. And, and she's like, no, 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 he's just playing. And the dog would be like, Arr, you know. <laughs> and the kids would be like, oh, and we got closer and closer. And until we're in contact distance, you know. And the kids would be like, no. You know, my little like, yeah. And of course, what's the worst thing to do? Run. Run. And the kid's like, yeah. And what does the dog do? You know, gets on his back legs and like jump off the game. My kid's completely traumatized right now, shaking and terrorized. You know, trauma, trauma. And the dog owner is like, oh, he loves it. I told you. He loves the dog's like, you know, like, and my kid's shaking and shivering. I think to myself, what what are you thinking about my children's feelings? What are you, what, what's going on for you? How are you understanding the process of, you know, of, of my fright, of these ch little, little innocent kids that, and, their, and their, their fear? Think about that. Just stop and, and just, you know, contemplate that moment. And after thinking about it numerous times, I realized to myself, you know what? These people are cruel. They're cruel. You see that? Like, they don't, they see, it's like, it's straight in their face. This child is experiencing fright. And they don't, just don't, they don't care. And I realized that's just, it's cruelty. You know, I, and I decided, you know, I want to I show up with my pet lion. That was my plan. I'm going to stand around the corner, you know, and then they'll be like, you know what I mean, I'm going to be around the corner. I know what time of day those dog owners are showing up. I know, you know, I'd be like, and I come with my kids and my pet lion, you know, and turn the corner like, hey, good morning. Like, whoa, you know, like, come on, Simba, you know, you know, and like, he doesn't bite, you know, uh, too much, you know, and they'll be like, whoa, and run, and guess what? My lion is twice, you know, that dog owner's size, and guess what? That dog is twice my kid's size. You see, what that dog owner is saying is, oh, don't be scared, right? It's not scary. What's he saying? He's saying, oh, it's not scary for me. That's what he's saying. He's saying, oh, I'm not scared. You see that? Oh, it doesn't bite me. Yeah, but it bites my kid, you know, or it freaks the heck out of my kid. You ever had that sixth grade sleepover party? You know, you had, you know, that experience? Right, and there's one, there's that one kid, you know, he's scared of the dark. Poor guy, you know, he's like a sixth grader, he's scared of the dark. And what does the bully do? You know, he's a class guy. What does he do? Come on, what happened? Turns right, he put, yeah, he puts in the closet, you know, like shuts the light, you know, and the kid's like, hey, get me out of And the guy's like, the monster, it's coming out of me. Right? And he goes, oh, it's so. What do you mean? That kid's scared. Oh, no, it's fine, it's dumb, you know. You try to explain it to him. Listen, it's uh, really unintelligent. There are, there are actually no monsters in there. You know, like, what do you mean? His, are, those, are those fears real? Is that experience real? So what do you mean? Like, what, what, you mean you're not scared? Sounds like my dentist, you know? I'm like, is it going to hurt? You know, he's like, it's not going to hurt me. You know, I'm like, like what, what, what are you trying to say? You know? You know, so often, you know, you, you walk in the park, you know, you like try to get away, maybe smoke a little joint there, you know, and, and you're like off on the side, and you see the babysitter, you see the, why are you laughing? We'll talk after class, okay. So, so uh, you know, so there's that, there's that, you see, and like, there's a babysitter, you know, like chilling out with a kid in the park, you know, and, and you see, you know, they're walking, and the kid trips, right, and, you know, scrapes his knee. And too often, the baby said, okay, sometimes she doesn't even notice. She's on the phone, you know, she doesn't even notice, okay? But let's say she does notice. You know, they go like, ah, my dear. What is that? And what, is it? and what does she say? Too often. It's okay. Eh, nothing happened. You ever hear that? Nothing, it doesn't hurt, right? You ever hear that? Doesn't hurt, nothing happened. What, nothing happened? My knee, what do you mean? Look at me, my knee is scraped. I'm, it's, it, you know, there's even a drop of blood, you know, if you're looking over the microscope, you know, it hurts. Right, but that's what she says, it doesn't hurt me. In other words, 
That is just a lack of sensitivity. That's, in effect, that's cruelty. You're just unable to see someone else into someone else. I want to think about that with you today. Now, let me get back to El Al. I forgot. I'm ADD. El Al. I don't tell you why I like El Al. See, let's go back to my kids. I'll tell you a story. Once I was flying, um, I don't remember, maybe it was we were flying to New York for the summer or back or something like that. It's quite a few, few years ago. I was with my kid, and I got some wild kids. I mean, you know, you've seen them. Some, you, know, you think I'm wild, and my kids are, some of them are like really wild. So my little boy is like, you know, he's like trying to, he's, like, he's misbehaving. And I remember, I remember, it, wasn't an, it was not an El Al flight. It wasn't, because I, how do I remember? It was, in fact, it was Lufthansa. It was a Lufthansa flight. And I remember, which is a German flight, I remember it because the, the students were walking around saying, black tea, schwarze tea, black tea, schwarze tea, schwarze tea. For weeks, my kids were like, we got home and, and we heard our guests, and my kids were like, schwarze tea, black tea. I'm like, oh man. You know? yeah. so, so, the, so the point is, like, fine. So like, you know, they're all prim and proper. You know, this is Lufthansa. And, uh, my kid is like, okay, you know, I, I'm opening the window. I, I'm hot. You know, I'm like, no, no, you can't. I don't care. You know, I'm, I'm like, no, you can't do that. You know, fine. And he's making noise, and and, and you know, you're not supposed to make so much noise. You know, this is Lufthansa. You know, I'm like, shh. So my little Chaim, he says, listen, I'm going to the bathroom. I say, why? He's like, I need to scream. You know, me scream. I'll go to the bathroom and scream. I'm like, all right, <laughs> knock yourself out, you know? <laughs> See, he goes, to, he goes to the bathroom, and finally I'm like, oh, finally some peace and quiet. I try to change my seat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, peace and quiet. And finally, 10 minutes later, about 10 minutes later, he, shows, he comes back, and his face is white. He's, you know, he's shaking, and like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Like, what? Chaim, what happened? He's like, what happened? I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm explosion. <laughs> I'm like, what, what? Say it again. So I'm like, I'm so, I'm so tired. I'm, so tired. <laughs> I'm like, Chaim, could you just get a hold of yourself? Would that like, explain to me? Right? And what happened? He was in the bathroom. He was like, man, he's in the bathroom anyway. Might as well do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Get what you came for. You know? So he's like, okay, I'll go to the bathroom. He goes to the bathroom and he flushed the toilet. Now, don't deny it. Everyone had their first flush. <laughs> But my son was like eight, nine years old. And he was so terrified. And he was, you know, and he's right, right? He was sure that the plane ex exploded. I mean, you know, he just, I mean, there's some, there, there, we're going to crash. You know, when he flushed the toilet, you know? And he comes racing out, you know, like pulls his pants up, you know? And, and you know what? I thought to myself, like, oh, poor thing, poor thing. And I want to tell you about El Al. El Al, anyone, anyone, anyone know the word Dvar Torah? Translate that word Dvar Torah. Can anyone help me? What, what is Dvar Torah? Words of Torah. Okay, words of Jewish wisdom, let's say. You know, it's just we're looking for a, just like a, a broad translation. Jewish wisdom. Elal has what I, what I would call maybe one of the most brilliant and inspiring Dvar Torahs I've ever heard. I mean, just, 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 it just, it just sums up Judaism. It goes like this. On every toilet, on every toilet, this is the teaching. One of the most profound Jewish teachings. <laughs> Noisy flushing is normal. Wow, what a teaching. You feeling it? If you're not feeling it, just take a, take a deep smell and smell this, <laughs> okay? I'm so inspired by this. I was so inspired. And it taught me, like, who, who would have even, who would have thought of that, you know? 
Who could have thought it? Who would have thought up that Dvar Torah? You know, to write that on the toilet? It does, it doesn't say that on Lufthansa. It doesn't say it on Delta. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And I thought to myself, wow, you know. There it is. There's that, there's that, you know, there's that uh, sensitivity, that delicate recognition of what someone else, anticipation of someone else's feelings. Let me tell you a Dvar Torah. What's a Dvar Torah? Some Jewish wisdom? Okay, check. And uh, here's, here's one of the 613 mitzvahs, right? There's 613 commandments in the Torah. We'll talk about, here's one of them. Okay, the most random, unexpected one. You ready? It goes like this. When you plow a field, when you plow a field, okay, remember, the Torah is a, a given to an, an agrarian society, agricultural world, right? People didn't have desk jobs. Okay, you're going to plow your field? Well, here's the, you listen up. Okay, you can use an ox, a set of oxen, or you could use a set of donkeys. But there's no mixing. You cannot use, you cannot pay, take a, a donkey and an ox and put them in the same yoke to pull the same plow in a field. All right? Don't let us catch you doing that. Okay? If you do that, that's like illegal. You know, they call the police. Woo! 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 Illegal. You know, whoa, we got you, you know? You, <laughs> you used a cow and a donkey. Dude, what's... <laughs> Okay, don't kill, you know, don't steal. I get it, you know, I get it. I mean, like, who cares? You know, whereas my old professor used to say, I don't give a care. <laughs> you know, like, who cares? Like, what, what does that have to do with it? Is this meaningful? What's the difference? What's God, what could, God could care less? What does God want? Anybody? Any? Your creative uh, thinking, anybody? Social sensitivity. Yeah. Okay. You're onto me. You're a genius. You're a genius. Hey, well, well, show, show it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe because it's how the animals will feel about each other. Explain. Maybe the, the donkey would get jealous of the cow or the ox because it's bigger. Mmm, bigger. Okay. That big buff dude, you know. And I feel like this small person. Okay. Okay. Yes. What's your name? Rafael. Rafael. Where are you from? Chile. Chile. Nice. So okay. Maybe one is stronger than the other one. One is going to push more so to the weight. Great. It's not fair. This, this cow is just much bigger, much stronger. It's a, it's a giant animal, right? The dunk is much, much smaller, right? And it's like getting pulled along. You know, it can't move as quickly. It can't carry as much, right? It's, 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 it'll be unfair. Good. Good. I want to share with you. I don't know. I don't know how to say this. It's just something that... It makes me, I feel like so proud to be Jewish. And I'm telling you, I say this and I feel like, it kind of sounds kind of weird, I feel like, I don't know, just my heart swells. I just I feel like, wow. Who could, listen to this, listen to this. The rabbis explain the following. There are certain laws about, that, that make an animal kosher versus not kosher. Anybody know? What's a, what makes a farm animal kosher to eat? Yes, yeah? Split hooves and Nice. It chews its cut. Okay? Split hooves and chews its cut. Okay? You got a farm animal that split hooves and chews its cut. That's called kosher. That's what it says in the Torah. That's what it says in the, in the, in the Bible. Okay? So listen carefully. Listen carefully. Mr. Cow, right? It's kosher, right? Mr. Cow's Jewish. Okay? So what is, right? That's how you know it's a Jewish animal, because right? what does it do? It, it eats a lot. Okay, that's obviously, that's the, the clear sign, the telltale sign that it's Jewish, right? So, it eats a lot. Now, now, now how does it work? I, I know it's kind of like, maybe some of you guys, uh, not so nice to talk about this stuff, but I, I, gotta, I gotta explain it, you know, it's not so pleasant. But basically, okay, we'll try to keep it simple here. Basically, uh, the animal regurgitates, okay? The cow has a, a few different stomachs, four stomachs actually, it eats, and then it kind of like, brings it up a little bit, and eats it, and swells it again into a different stomach, and then brings it up, and continues. And so picture the scene. Mr. Cow and Mr. Donkey are, you know, just enjoying a nice, pleasant morning of plowing in the field. And you know what? It's hard work. 
And they're getting tired, you know, it's hard work, and they're getting hungry. I mean, they want to stop for lunch. And, but all the hard days work, you got to do what you got to do. You got to bring home the, you, know, you got to bring home the bacon for Miss, Miss Cow, you know what I'm saying? Mrs. Ox, you know, Mrs. Uh, whatever, Mrs. Donkey. Anyway, so they're plowing, and suddenly, the donkey, as hungry as he is, notices that Mr. Cow somehow, you know, got lunch. He's eating lunch. Man, that, you know, that, you know, that selfish, I was going to say a selfish pig, you know, that selfish cow, how did daddy do that? You know, that's unfair. And of course, he's enjoying it. He's chewing, right? eating lunch. And, and the cow and, and the donkey is like suffering and in pain. And it feels, it, it can feel, it sees it, it's, it's, it's chewing. Now, of course, the donkey doesn't have that, it's not kosher, it doesn't have that Jewish, uh, donkey's not Jewish, right? So it doesn't have that Jewish mind. It doesn't realize that the cow's not eating lunch, right? Mr. Cow is reviewing breakfast. <laughs> right? That's really what's happening, right? He's not eating lunch at all. Don't worry, he's not ahead of the game. You know, you haven't missed out at all. But it makes no difference. Because, the, because that's what the donkey considers and perceives, that's what the donkey thinks, it's illegal. It's unfair to the poor donkey. The donkey's going to feel hurt. Says God, illegal, you can't do it. You cannot plow using a donkey and a cow. And I think to myself, who could have thought that up? Who would have, who could have imagined? I mean, I just think about it. Where does that sensitivity come from? I feel just so proud. You know, this is like, what a level. What a, what a, what an, what an exquisite, beautiful, you know, way of living, way of thinking. Let's sign me up, you know. Well, that's just one little, that's just one little mitzvah out of 613. I got 600, 612 more of those. What's the most important principle in the Torah? And it is one God. Love your fellow man. Any, anyone else? Well, the most important principle in the Torah. Well, let me tell you a story. Okay? Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a great rabbi. His name was Hillel. His name was Hillel. Hillel was a, a great scholar and a... And if you know something about Judaism and Jewish scholarship, in Judaism, scholarship, that's the easy part. <laughs> it's, not, it's not about how much Torah, you know, how much Torah your mind can travel through. It's much more about how much, how much the Torah can travel through you. Right? You hear that? So any really authentic Great, truly great rabbi is not just, doesn't just have a good brain, right? He has, he's a developed man. He's a developed person. He's imbibed right, and, 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 and taken in so much godliness that he's just, he's just on a different level. So Hillel was, Hillel was well known and one time these two people, had a debate. They said, that guy Hillel, he's a sham, he's a, you know, he's a fraud, he's not real, he's not the real thing. They said, I'm telling you, this guy, he's so righteous, he's so good, he's so wise and pure and kind and refined. And, and the guy's like, nah, I don't buy it. He goes, okay, let's have a wager. And the Talmud tells the story about the bet. The bet. What happened? They decide 400 gold coins says that I can tick Hillel off. Make him lose his cool. The other guy says, no way. It'll never happen. Fine. 400 gold coins. So the guy shows up, right, at Hillel's door, looking to frustrate, to anger him. Now, what's the, wor what's the busiest and most, you know, tense time, uh, you know, of, 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 of the week in a Jewish home? 
Anybody? Friday afternoon, right? There it is, right? Everybody knows that. Okay, so he knocks on the door. Uh, Hillel, Hillel, he comes running Friday afternoon. Hillel's in the shower. He's trying to get ready for Shabbat. Hillel, Hillel, he's like, whoa, it's an emergency. He races out of the shower. What is it? Yeah, he goes, you Hillel? He goes, yeah. That, that. What's wrong? What's wrong? He's like, oh, I have a very important, a crisis, a big, a big question. Because what's, what's, what's the question? He goes, why do the Babylonians have such round heads? <laughs> so Hillel's like, Wow, that's such a, an important question. Wow, yeah, I get it. Well, you know, and he tries, like, you know, he's trying to, trying to figure out, you know, explain why that might be true. He goes, oh, thank you so much, and he leaves, right? Fine, Hill gets back in the shower, and the guy comes back, and he goes, what's wrong? He goes, I need you, it's an emergency. Because he comes out, he goes, what's wrong? He goes, why do the Syrians have such round eyes? And Hillel's like, oh, wow. Yeah, such an important question. And he's like, well, there's a lot of sand, you know, and they squint, you know. <laughs> and this goes on a couple of more times, you know. And finally the guy's like, I hate you. <laughs> he's like, what, what do I do? Like, you know, I just lost 400 gold coins because of you. Fine. That's Hillel. So the Talmud continues and tells the story. There was a convert, non-Jew. And he shows up with, we'll use a Jewish word, a lot of chutzpah. Chutzpah. Okay? Just uh, audacity. And he walks up to the greatest scholar, right? And he says, listen, I want to be Jewish. He says, okay, you want to convert to Judaism? Okay, you, know, you want to, here, you know, uh, so, you know, fill out an application for the, for, the, for, the, for the conversion process. You know, he's like, no, 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 I want to hear this right now, right here. He goes, okay, uh, I, 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 one foot, right? Maybe you first heard the story before. Standing on one foot, go ahead, come on, right now, teach me the whole Torah, you know? Okay, teach me the whole Torah on one foot. So, you understand how insulting that is? I mean, come on, a little respect. I mean, you know, we got a tradition that is you know, thousands of years old, that is thousands of pages long, you know, this lifetimes of scholarship, and you want to learn to master the whole thing in one second? And Hill says, okay, it's a deal. Here's what you need to know. You want all of Judaism? You want the whole Torah in one shot? Okay. Here's what you need to know, right? Anybody know, anybody know what he tells him? Don't do unto others what you don't want others to do to you. Just be sensitive to other people. The things you don't like, don't do those things. That's the whole thing. The rest of the Torah, all those pages, says Hillel, eh, that's just commentary. Not my words, Hillel's words. That's just commentary to this principle, to this point. Be sensitive to other people's feelings. That's the whole Judaism. That's the whole book. That's all, this, all that other scholarship. It's just, it's just different you know, permutations. Just different situations, you know, describing that from different angles. It's just the same. It's, it's all one teaching. That's Judaism. That's the Torah. You know, sometimes people say to me, hey, rabbi, yeah, you know, you meet those guys. Hey, what's wrong with you? Hey, I don't, I don't want to keep that. Talk. What's wrong with being a good person? What's wrong with being a good person? I say, nothing. <laughs> Nothing's right. It's perfect. The question is, what's a good person? And comes the, God, comes, comes the Torah. God sends this book with 613 pieces of advice. Here's how you could become a good person. Because all these principles, that's all they are. Just how to become kind refined, delicate, sensitive, gentle, loving with other human beings. That's it. That's the most important principle. So my friends, excuse, part, you know, pardon my French. You walk into the bathroom, right? I'm sure it's happened to everybody. And 
excuse me, uh, forgive me, I'm really sorry, it's like embarrassing to have to talk about this. You walk into the bathroom, and there's like a mess on the floor. You know what I'm saying? And you ask yourself, who in the world, like, use this bathroom? I mean, I, 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 it, it shocks me every time. Like, what, you, who are you? Who, who were you? You know, you leave your, uh, excuse me, on the seat, or flush the toilet, dude. You know, have you ever been to, I mean, I'm sorry, forgive me for talking this way, it just shocks me. And I think to myself, wait, 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 wait. Do you enjoy that? You know, I don't know who you are. And I don't get that mad, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but did, did you enjoy that? I mean, I don't enjoy it. You enjoy it walking to the bathroom and the guy didn't, the guy didn't flush the toilet? So why would you do that to the next person? Why would you, like, how could you, how could you even imagine doing that? Well, what's the answer? I'm not really thinking about the next person. Are you Jewish? Yeah, yeah. You, you consider yourself, uh, you know, God-oriented? I mean, you know, Torah-oriented? I mean, isn't that, isn't that, like, isn't that the whole thing? Yeah. So, like, with what you um, just said before, the whole, you know, poop all over the bathroom. Like, yeah, excuse um, me. Excuse yeah, the so, example. Yeah. No, it reminded me of the whole thing. But, um, so, like, you said. You want to make a confession? I mean, it is. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, um, yeah. So, like, what you said about how the tour is designed so people can live that life that you just explained. Right. And love. And yes. And selfless. I, I totally 100% agree with you. So, but can't you also agree with the fact that, you know, because everybody's different and everybody, you know, lives differently and everybody interprets things differently, that, you know, it, you may not necessarily have to follow all 63 commandments to live that life. And even the Torah says that a man who, you know, unknowingly follows the Torah and lives the best life, like, say, a Buddhist monk who can pretty much be compared to, like, a, a Siddic man, you know, living his life, you know, follows that life, is almost more holy. You know, everybody's different. And if you, for instance, like the Torah gives exceptions to commandments for like, um, if you have to put something in priority. So it will give an exception for life. Like life is sacred. The only exception that he will allow is like if somebody has a gun to your head saying kill somebody, mm -hmm. take the bullet. Mm -hmm. So if you can make these exceptions to the extremes of like valuing life, why can't exceptions be made of if an individual is living that life that you just described, but is not following all 613 mm -hmm. commandments? Like, why does it have to be such an extreme as, like, life has to be on the line rather than just living that life is, is, is on the line, and therefore, you know, do you get what I'm saying? Uh, I think you're saying more than one thing, no, but no. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me respond with this. But do you think it's most important to live the life that you just described, period? I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. It, 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 there are complexities here. It's not, it's not just all black and white, but it all comes from that corpus of law. In other words, the Torah itself weighs in to every different situation, right? So, like you say, of course there are exceptions, and the, and the Torah itself gives exceptions, and the rabbis give exceptions, and everything, everything always depends on life circumstances and what's happening, and so it's hard to say, like, oh, across the board, everyone has to do this and this and this, you know what I'm saying? So there are, are exceptions, but I'll, what I'm saying is this, the, gen the, you know, the, the same genius that we say, wow, who could have thought that up? Who could have thought that up, right? And a lot of times, you know? Like sometimes people show up to me and say, hey, who? You know, they, this, this concept of sitting shiva. Who thought of that? It's like so, it's ingenious. Like, no one does that in the world. You know, the Torah says, listen, when someone passes away, you sit in your house for seven days, and everyone you know comes to visit you, and you don't go to work. It's like, and it's so cathartic and so healing. People are like, wow, who thought of that, you know? Right? But, don't, be showing a gear? What's what's foolishness, you know? That's stupid, you know? I'm an idiot, you know? And I say, wait, wait, just hold on a second. The same genius who thought this up, thought that up. You see, the same genius who said, you just, maybe you don't understand it as much. Okay, fine. I, I respect that. I get it. We don't understand everything. But the source comes from the same source. And the reason is what I'm, we're learning here today. The reasoning behind it is all one reasoning. Now, sometimes we, we can understand it better. Sometimes we can... We, Sometimes they're more mysterious and mystical. We can't. I Esoteric, mean, like, yeah. I've, talk, I've, I've talked to rabbis, you know, about the same concept. And it's, even like Rabbi Berger says, like, there's no Jew out there that lives by the 630 commandments. Right, it's so, actually it's, impossible. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, like, that being said, you know, this 
you know, this genius, this design, which I believe in, you know, I do, I really hold dear in my heart that design this, like, if no Jew can follow the 630 commandments, then why is it, like, frowned upon, for instance, for me? I pray three times a day. Um, the one thing that I don't connect it, that I'm still trying, is, like, the wrapping to fill in. It doesn't, it doesn't click with me. It, I just, it's something that I feel less connected while doing it, and I feel more connected when I pray my own way. You know, I feel like the, the, the point of it is to really connect with God, to have an appreciation, to show that, to, to live that life. And, and I feel like I can do that, if not do that even more so, without the tefillin. You know, and there's certain things, there's certain things that I, that I love, that I agree with, that I live my life by, that I'm right. becoming to adjust, but the, the whole, and that's just like one example. You know, and in my opinion, I feel like if somebody is living that life that you described, you mm -hmm. know, before you went on the whole poop tangent in the bathroom, <laughs> then that is what's most important. And it doesn't have to be an extreme, like, you can break Shabbos to save a life. You can break certain, you or not follow certain mitzvahs if you're living that life and mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. a good person, mm -hmm. being a good productive member right. of society. Evan, right? Is that right? That is correct. Um, the, 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 um, it's like a shame because I just gave a bunch of classes about tefillin. Right? Uh, he could tell you. <laughs> it's just a matter of understanding. You know, a lot of things are hard to understand before you figure them out. You know what I'm saying? So you have questions, and that's great. Perfect. I, 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 I encourage that. Right? But I just encourage the, the struggle, the analysis, the examination, instead of just you know, uh, uh, passing judgment. You know. There's certain things that we'll never understand, correct? Certain things, but so, Tefillin's not one of them. Yeah, but, um, okay, that's yeah. just... Yeah, you know, so that's what I'm saying, in other words... Understanding is necessary in, in court, like, you know what I mean? Like, even, even when they say, like, follow the mitzvahs, they even say, like, even if you don't understand it, follow it. It's so true. Understanding's not even necessary to begin with. Well, not exactly, because Judaism is a relationship, and we want to understand what God wants us, what he, what he wants us to do. So we try our best to try to understand. That's, that's, that's learning. Relationship with God. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And everybody's different. And everybody's different. Everybody's different. I'll tell you one thing, Evan. Yeah. You can always be you. I mean, it's not like some people, people are, feel threatened by Judaism because I, it, it strips me of my individuality or my, you know, or my creative expression. You know what I mean? And... and that's certainly, yeah, that's, that's certainly not the case. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I should enforce right, exactly. I, I subscribe to that. Yeah. I see that's a little bit of what you're, where you're going, and I, 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 I take my hat off to that. I don't, I don't want to blind anyone, so I'm not actually <laughs> going to take it off. But, but uh, that's, uh, I, yes, I accept it. Yes, you had a question? Uh, no, I wanted to respond to Evan. Oh, we go ahead. We've about this before, and like, I agree with you, but you stated it a little differently now, and I think that to a certain extent you're right, but... So I think that I think that while you're definitely right to a certain extent, you need to balance that very carefully. Of course, and there's definitely things in the Torah that you should not break that make the most sense for them. And everything. also, if you look at the rules of logic, you can't really extrapolate from an extreme example to a less extreme example, only in the opposite direction. So while there are there are definitely loopholes in the extreme example, I don't think you can really take that to mean that you can do it as you want. Guys, I appreciate it. I appreciate the exchange, and I'm sure there's a lot more to say, and I'm sure a lot more people have a lot to say. I just, I'm, we're going to run out of time real soon, so I just want to try to just close up a little bit. If I had the time, if we had the time, right, I'd love to just open the floor. Let's make a long list. You see, think, <laughs> yeah, you guys can stay for the next two hours, no problem. If, if, we, if, if I were to ask you, you know, I just gave a, sil a simple example. It's an unfortunate reality, but there's, there's so many others. Let's get practical here. Let's get, pra you know, practical spirituality, I think, you know. Have a practical, you know, Judaism, okay? This is, if this is the most essential principle of Judaism, let's get, let's get Jewish here, you know. We're, let's, like, let's make a list of things that are just so annoying, you know, that you hate when people do them, and why would we do them, you know what I mean? You're talking on the phone to someone, and, and it's so obvious that they're not with you. You know, they're busy on their Facebook page, and you can see them, you know, posting while you talk, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 uh, right? But the point is, like, what is that? Like, yeah, uh-huh. You know, like, you see that. You can see it. It's like, you know the guy's not with you. Like, 
when you're talking to someone, you don't look at them? How often does that happen? You're talking to someone, he's just totally not with you. You know? Is that annoying? You're like sharing, a, maybe sharing something deep, you know, a feeling, an expression, an experience. The person's like, uh huh, uh huh. You know, you see like a classic, the guy and girl, you know, husband and wife, she's like, she's like spilling her guts, you know, and then, you know, and then she's like, and the guy's reading the newspaper, you know, at the table. He's like, you're not listening to me. And he's like, no, no, I am listening to you. She says, oh, she says, oh yeah, what did I just say? Right? And he's like, you're not listening to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, how often do you see that? You know, it, 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 what is that? Like, and, this is, and this is like a close, like a close relationship? I don't get it. Do you like when people do that to you? You know, people look at your screen or, you know, the list goes on and on. I'd love, to, I'd love you to make that list. I'd love it. We just don't have the time. I'd love that. Annoying and uh, uh, upsetting and frustrating. And that's the most important principle in the whole Torah. You know, everyone always, we live in a world where everyone is craving love and relationships, and it's all, that's what it's all about. You just turn on the radio, right? Every single song is about this, about this. Every song on the radio is about love and lost love and broken love and longing for love, right? Every song, falling into love, out of love, you know? Right? The vast majority of them, all right? Okay? Yeah. And, 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 and everyone's focused on this. And I ask myself, what are, you, what are you thinking about? You know, is this about just your own selfishness? I don't know. I encounter so many, too many people, too many people who are too self-centered. You know, everyone longs for intimacy, right? But intimacy, as someone once said, right, let's write it this way. Intimacy is really into me see. Right? That's the truth about intimacy. But that's the problem. That's the problem. Too, for too many people, it's not about that. It's like me, you know, just no, 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 myself, myself, myself. No, 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 no. You want to love me? Into me see. As long as I'm okay, that's, everything's okay. Th that's not how love works. That's not how relationship works. That's not how life works. That's, that's what the Torah is screaming to us. And I'm telling you that for the rest of those 612, you have the right to challenge your rabbi. Show me where it is. Show it to me. Where is the sensitivity? Where is the love? Where is the kindness? Because that's the Jewish teaching. And if the rabbi can't answer, well, maybe it's time to get a different rabbi. Because that's the, that's the religion, that, that's the relationship that I'm, that I'm signed up. God says two things. I love God and love people. Love God and love people. Well, that's, that's the be-all and end-all. That's the whole thing. That's the beginning and the end of Judaism. Just be, be nice. Be nice. We live in a society, and I'm sad I'm sad. It makes me sad to say this. But people have just got to watch their back all the time. I see people, they're so guarded. You see people, they walk in the street. They're so, no, oh, maybe I'll make a mistake. You know, oh, maybe it's gonna, someone's going to laugh at me. Someone's going to laugh at me. Like, everyone's like, oh, you know, it makes, I'm like, oh, you're, oh, everything's open. Everything's closed. Okay, I'm okay. What do people think of me? Why? What are you so scared of? Oh, well, uh, you know, you make the wrong move. It's like, ha, 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 ha. And the guy slips. And what happens? He, says, he fell on his tuchus, right? His tuchus hurts. The guy just slipped, and what's his first reaction? What are people's first reactions? They're on the floor. What's their first reaction? Huh? He looks around. Why? His took his hurts. Because the hell, you have to figure out, how, see, how bad is the damage, right? How many people saw that they're going to laugh at me and, make, and humiliate me and make fun of me? What? I don't understand. What kind of people are we really? The guy's down. Then what? You kick him when he's down? Shame on you. Shame on you. Like, what happens when you fall down? Is that what you want? People just make fun of you. And even worse, my friends, even worse. We find ourselves in a society. It hurts me. It hurts me to say this. People are looking to tear other people down. Just looking for that slip up so I can pounce on it. Who are you? You know, just look, look turn on the radio. Turn, turn on the TV. Like, oh, 
It happens in sports all the time. Oh, it went through his legs. You know, he dropped the ball. Oh, let's watch that again. He dropped the ball. Oh, let's watch it in slow motion. Do, 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 do. Ooh, ha, 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 look at that. Like, dude, why can't you, like, try to build people up? Why does it have to, oh, you have to look to hurt people and tear them down and make them small? Is that the way you like? Is that, the, is that your dream? Is that what you like, the way you want people to treat you that way? I don't. I don't. And you know what people say to me sometimes when I talk about this? They say to me, well, we can make friends with the roast, right? The roast. We'll roast him. You know, we'll just embarrass him and make fun of him and, you know, humiliate him. And what do people say to me? And what? We all do it. And everybody does it. All my friends do it. What's the difference? You know, I could do it too. Yeah, it just, it, come on, everybody does it. And I say to them, everybody does it? What did Abraham do? You know, everyone's bowing down to, to, to trees and flowers. He's like, everyone's like, you're, you're, everybody's doing it. I don't care what everybody's doing. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's insensitive. It's immoral. It's immoral. And you know what? You don't even hear this. No one's even fighting about this. And everyone's like, oh, you know, media's not, not you know, maybe the problem with the media is, you know, da, 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 you know I don't know, nudity or, you know, or this. I say, forget everything. How about just being a decent... How about creating a little bit of safety with other human beings? Where everyone's walking around scared. You know, those are not my, my friends don't do that. I swear to you, I'd never have friends like that. What, I'm afraid they're going to like hurt me and, 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 and attack me and laugh at me? Those are not my friends. I bless you that you don't have such friends either. And you don't act that way towards your friends either. That's it. This is it. This is the, this is the Jewish principle. This is the whole Torah. This is all the Judaism. My time is up. Thanks for listening. God bless you.